Welcome to this video. I'm your host, Kevin Hua, and today we're going to try to figure out what's up with gases, specifically shielding gases, when using the gas metal arc welding process. The gas metal arc welding process is more commonly known as MIG or MAG welding. The reason they call it that is metal inert gas or metal active gas, sometimes known as reactive gases. And reactive gases will react with your weld pool, either adding heat, mechanical properties, and some examples of these gases are nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, or oxygen. There are different reasons for using these gases, but for this video, we're going to talk about shielding. We're trying to keep the atmosphere out of our weld zone. Choosing the right gas for your application can greatly affect your weld. So you want to match your shielding gas to your wire and vice versa. Now, cost may be a factor, availability may be a factor. So it's very important to determine that before you weld. So the four gases I'll be trying out today is a trimix that's 91% argon, 5% CO2, and 4% oxygen. I have straight CO2, I have straight argon, and over here, I have a dual gas, which is 75% argon and 25% CO2. Whenever you're handling cylinders, you want to keep safety in mind. You want to make sure they're chained up. You want to make sure that your safety glasses are on. And you never want to stand in front of your regulator. There's parts in here that if it hits pressure, they could fly out and get you. Today, we'll be welding a fillet weld on quarter inch material, trying four different gases. And afterwards, we're going to visually inspect what we experienced while welding. The way we're going to ensure that all we're testing is the gases is I will leave my settings exactly the same. Now that we're ready to weld, we're going to be looking for bead profile, penetration, arc stability, and spatter. Overall, how did the weld go? And right now we're gonna start with Trimix. And as always, before you weld, put on your PP. Now that we've welded out our coupon with Trimix, we're gonna to move to straight CO2. I hope you saw some differences in the amount of spatter or the noise that was happening. So now that we've done straight CO2, we'll move on to straight argon. Well, that was pretty different. Now that we've tried straight argon, we'll move to a dual gas or 75-25 mix. Something very important to remember when changing out cylinders, make sure your bottle is off before removing your regulator. Now that we've welded out all of our coupons and let them cool down, we're going to compare the characteristics that these different gases gave us. So right off the bat, we're going to look at the weld profile. The leg lengths are nice and even. It looks very smooth throughout. And if you look at these edges or toes, they're nice and wet in. While I was welding with this Trimix, the arc was smooth. I could tell the weld was penetrating and those toes were also tying in. I could tell while I was working along this fillet weld that there wasn't any porosity showing up. It was nice and stable 
and my travel speed was also nice and stable. Now we're going to look at the coupon with CO2 as the gas. You can tell that the weld is a little convex, which means it is rounded for a finish. You can tell that the toes of the weld aren't quite tied in, and you can see it's a little bit erratic. So I could tell while I was welding this fillet that the arc was quite erratic, but it was driving into the plate, giving me penetration. My travel speed had to slow down a little bit. Moving on to the next gas, which was straight argon. We're going to see a very convex weld with barely tied in toes. And you can already see the porosity in the weld. What I experienced while welding with straight argon is I couldn't achieve spray. It was always a globular or short circuit transfer. I also noticed that it was very erratic kind of shooting all over the place. My travel speed also had to slow down. Now bringing it all back around to 7525 gas. We can tell that our bead is nice and flat, slightly convex. Our toes are nice and tied in, and the weld appearance is quite smooth. While I was welding this joint out, I experienced a fairly smooth arc. I could see the wire driving into the plate, giving me penetration and I could tell that it was wetting out nice, so tying in. Now with those less smooth arc characteristics, you can see that I do have some spatter coming off of this weld. So after welding with all of these gases, you can clearly see the difference that each one makes. But if we look at the Trimix and the 7525, they're quite similar. So why would I wanna use a 7525 or a Trimix? Now that might be depending on the material I'm welding. It might be dependent on the wire I'm using or the cost, because the cost of a Trimix over a dual may be twice the price. So using the gas metal arc welding process, argon and CO2 don't work great on their own. Argon doesn't work at all. But by combining the two and mixing the amounts, you get better results. I wanna mention again that you wanna match your gas to your wire and vice versa and that will depend on your application. Another thing I wanna mention is availability. Not every welder supply or gas supply is going to have the Trimix. Maybe they'll only have the 7525. So at that point, you'd want a wire that will work with that gas. To wrap things up, I think it's very important to have a base knowledge of shielding gases and what additives may or may not do. If you have any questions, reach out to your gas supplier and they'll be able to answer those questions. Thank you very much for watching this video. What's up with gases? I hope you found it informative and please check out part two where we focus on flux core arc welding using the same four gases.